Yes, so guys, Nico and Adon here, and in this video, we're cooking a whole lamb spit on the rotisserie. Or as we call it, lamb on the souvla. Alright, let's start with this first part of this marinade. We're going to grab 26 grams of black peppercorn and put it into our mortar and pestle. Start crushing it up. Now that we've got the consistency that we're looking for in the pepper, we're going to start adding 170 grams of sea salt. So the ratio that we're working with uh, for the salt and pepper is 10 grams of salt per kilo and 1.5 grams of black peppercorn. Now our lamb 17 kilos, so depending what's available to you at the time, if you work with that kind of ratio, you'll get the same quantity as us. Now we've got the consistency we're looking for, it's time to put the lamb on the spit. So what you want to do is measure out where you want this lamb to sit on the barbecue. Then grab yourself your rod, your spit, with a prong, something like this. Now you wanna go ahead and stick it right up the corner of the lamb, okay? So right underneath the tail, and you want the prongs to latch themselves in firmly underneath the legs of the lamb. So pull that through tight. Happy there, yep. So now that we've secured the back, we're gonna use this to secure the front legs. So we've just slid that onto the rod. Tighten it up and simply just put your legs inside and it just holds it all nicely. All right, so now that we've got our front prongs on, we're going to tie it with some string. Now, just a tip as well, if you soak your string in water, it will help tighten once it hits the heat on the charcoal. So now that we've secured the legs, it's time to secure the neck. So what we do here is we run the string twice around the neck, push the pole down tight as far down as you can and tie it off as good as possible. Now that the front's been taken care of, we need to secure the back of the lamb. So what you want to do is grab the feet of the lamb, push down on them so that they're almost standing flat onto the rod. Then get your gumbaro to grab some string. Again, we always do a minimum of a double tie. Wrap around the first leg and then secure that to the rod. Move on to the second and double wrap that to the rod as well. So now that we've tied up the front legs, the neck and the rear legs, it's time to secure the spine to the spear. We're gonna secure it in three spots, one at the lower back, one in the middle and one at the top. So we've got our needle ready here. We've already pulled the string through twice, so it's double threaded straight away. But what Anthony's gonna do is just poke it through from the top and we just feed it back around and we tie it off. Sometimes it helps as well if you lift the bar up from the front bringing it up closer towards the spine. So there we have it, there's the leg secured, the prong, then we've got here the first stitch, the second stitch, and the third stitch. All right, now it's all secured, let's get on to the marination. Firstly, we're gonna grab ourselves a tablespoon of Dijon mustard and baste it inside of the lamb. By basting the lamb, it helps our salt and pepper mix stick to the inside of the lamb. And we also love the taste that the Dijon mustard gives to the lamb. All right, so now we've based it with the mustard, it's time to start putting our salt and pepper mix. You pretty much go through one quarter of your salt and pepper mixture through the inside of the lamb. Make sure you put it everywhere. Don't use it all, obviously, That's, it, it is a lot of salt and pepper because you still need to use it on the outside of the lamb. Plus, we apply it throughout the cook while it's cooking every hour. Yeah, Nico, that smells unreal. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is add in our onions, our garlic, our lemon, and fresh thyme. So, we've got here two brown onions, which we've sliced up, chuck that inside. We've got a good handful of garlic, add that in. Two lemons, cut into quarters, just so it's not too big. And we've got a fresh bunch of thyme here. Just put that in, it's beautiful. Now that's done, we're now gonna get started sewing up the stomach. All right, so we're gonna start the sewing off at the bottom, making our way up to the top. We wanna keep all the moisture inside and all our herbs and spices. And Anthony always does the stitching on the lambs. Since a young kid, he's been loving knitting. You still got the scarf? Yeah. That you made last Christmas? Yep. You do a very good job when you knit like that, Anthony. Thanks, they got. I wouldn't have it any other way. We're cutting it off just before the ribs. Now it's finished, we're just gonna do a couple more stitches up on top of the ribs just to keep it close so we don't lose our onions and lemons. Alright, so the final stage before we uh, have our lamb ready for the spit is we want to put roughly one quarter of our salt and pepper blend on top of the lamb. A little bit's going to drop off, that's not a problem because when it's cooking, we're going to be basting it and continually 
putting the salt and pepper on top. All right, so the first thing that we're doing is we're just uh, testing out the lamb on the spit to make sure it's all secure and spinning correctly. You always want to do this first before you light the charcoal because you don't want to learn out the hard way that uh, you haven't secured it properly. All right, the charcoal has been lit. We've used cotton wool and methylated spirits. We'll leave it like this until the charcoal is completely white and lit correctly, and then we'll ash it down. Alright guys, so now that the charcoal is fully lit and white, ash the fire out just to drop the temperature. And we want to make sure we ash this really good because we want a low heat to start with. Now don't be scared, you can still see that it's continually burning underneath. By ashing it, it stops the charcoal from burning out too quickly and lets it last for a few hours. So as you can see, the way we positioned the charcoal in relation to the lamp is pretty much just here around the thick part of the front legs to the bottom of the ribs and then we've started again at the legs down to the feet we've got nothing pretty much here in the middle there's not a whole lot of meat there we don't want that to get too hot and start burning now we've, we started off uh, the cook up high we just want to stay uh, at that height for roughly a couple of hours we don't want to brown the outside we want to slowly cook it from the inside out so at the end it's correctly cooked through the way we sort of gauge this temperature um, in regards to the height, if you hold your hand pretty much at the bottom of the lamb or the midway of the lamb, you should be able to get six to seven seconds before you have to retract your hand um, from the heat. So it's not too hot, it's just a low temperature at the moment. So we're 45 minutes into this cook, we're going to add some fresh rosemary and some dried oregano to our fire just to give it a, a smoke. The smoke will give the meat a different flavour. We'll do this twice through this cook. Oh right, guys, so the lamb's been cooking for one hour now. Now what we do from this point onwards, every hour, we baste it. Now our baste consists of extra virgin olive oil, rosemary, and garlic. This has been infusing for over one month. We always have this on hand. It never goes to waste, and it adds a really good flavor. So just give it a gentle spray all over. This is also gonna help keep the moisture in, and we're gonna continue to do this every hour. And now once you've basted it, we now apply our salt and pepper back over the lamb. So we pretty much go through another quarter of our salt and pepper mixture while we're cooking the lamb, which then leaves us one quarter at the end, which we can use while we're eating. If we need to bring the temperature up at all, we just give it a light spread and it'll bring the temperature back up. It's time for our final smoke. We're probably about uh, 2045 minutes into the cook and uh, we're going to chuck the rosemary and oregano on. When cooking a lamb, it's not about who cooks it the quickest, but who cooks it the most juiciest. Today, we have plenty of time and we're in no rush. We want to cook this for around seven to eight hours. If you want to cook it faster, you definitely can. It just needs a higher heat throughout the cook. All right, guys, so now it's, uh, it's been three hours. The charcoal temperature is slowly coming down. So we're going to drop down the spit one level just to get closer to the heat and keep the consistency. On. Now as you can see our charcoal is still holding up and this is because we've ashed it it keeps everything contained inside it doesn't let too much air to come in and burn it too quickly. All right guys uh, even though we've got the main lamb on we're, we're getting hungry first mess of that are gonna come on we've got some chicken drumsticks. Just approaching the five hour mark now. We're gonna drop it down one more level on the spit. So we've added a little bit of charcoal about 20 minutes ago, and we're just scratching it all up now. You know it's almost getting ready when the joints start to split. I know it's looking good. It's best to hold off. I know uh, it's hard to resist the juicy lamb, but uh, it's best we keep our hands off of it and wait until the end. Adonia, what do you reckon eh? Mate, it's just looking good mate. It's going devi. It's getting close. The lamb's hidden in internal temperature of 75 degrees. We're going to leave it a little while longer and then we'll take it off. Alright guys, so after 7 hours we've got it to the colour that we want. We're going to take it off and have a test. Well, we're going to bring it over. Oh, 
Nigga. Nigga. That's killer. That, that, that is killer. Hey, if you want to be a manga, you got to cook like a manga.